today I want to talk to you about Moss's Skincare Aram Multi-Correctional Luminosity Elixir and I got the sample from Aurora Beauty. I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about Aurora Beauty as well as Moss Skincare, then I'm going to be talking about the product itself and finally I'm going to give you my opinion of it. My name is Sharon, welcome back to my channel. Make sure you guys subscribe below and turn on notifications to get the latest updates. Okay, so let's get started. Aurora Beauty sells products from a variety of different brands and they do have the chance for you to sample some of the products so you can try before you buy. Um, now you have to purchase a minimum of five samples and I believe they were about three or four dollars a piece and I ended up purchasing 15 samples from them. And what they say is the purpose of samples is to um, patch test the product and this is really important. Despite a product being natural, it doesn't mean that you're not going to have a reaction to it. Um, and by patch testing it, you can make sure that you're not going to be irritated, your skin is not going to be irritated or you don't have a reaction. Now in addition to this, you can also test out the texture, the scent, um, and just see if it works for your hair and skin. Now I personally really love samples because it allows me the opportunity to try more expensive hair or skincare products that are just out of my price range. So it allows me to try some of these luxury brands that are out there. Now Moss Skincare is rather new in the, in the beauty scene or the skincare scene. They were started in 2015 by a physicist. And I think this is really important because they talk about how important it is to use nature along with science. And there are so many brands out there that are natural, but a lot of the products that they have seem very crunchy. It seems like things that you can almost make in your own kitchen, um, except these brands, you know, put it in a pretty container, they have nice websites, and then they slap on an astronomical price tag. And theirs are not like that. The ingredient list is very different. Something else that she acknowledges is the importance of preservatives. And what do preservatives do? Um, they preserve your product. Now this is very important. So without preservatives, if you have a product with water or it's water based such as aloe vera or it's going to come in contact with water such as a salt or sugar scrub that you would keep in your shower, you need preservatives. If you don't have a preservative, um, it's going to be growing natural microorganisms. Natural isn't always something that's good. So you can have things such as bacteria, yeast, mold, and fungus growing in your product or inside of the container. And if you don't have preservative, you're going to have to use it up very quickly, you know, like in a day or so. You keep it in the refrigerator, it might keep a few days longer, or freeze it. Um, and not all products can be frozen. So I like the fact that she acknowledges the importance of preservatives. She also uses um, hydrosols or hydrolats or floral waters instead of just using water. Now I believe water is somewhat of a filler ingredient. Hydrosols are just, they're more expensive, um, but they do have more benefits than just water. Um, and so she talks about that and she also talks about not using fairy dust. So fairy dust it is, she says in the formulation world, is referred to as filler ingredients. And they use ingredients that are at the maximum potential. One example she gave was vitamin C and she talked about how it had to do with 5%. They found like 5% is what's needed to reach the, for the product to have the most, uh, be most effective for your skin. And now other uh, companies out there, while they might put in vitamin C, they could put in 1% or 2%. So I feel like a lot of companies do that. You know, whatever is really, you know, in, in fashion at the moment or whatever, such as argan oil, I know is a big one. They would boast about having 100% pure argan oil and you'd find it at the end of the ingredient list. Um, and I don't believe that Moss Skincare does this. Um, and the last thing that they do that I think is really cool is they're using CO2 extractions or extracts. So CO2 is referred to this as the supercritical extraction method um, and it is better than cold pressing. So traditionally, in order to get out the nutrients such as with um, an essential oil or carry oil, you would use cold press extraction. And that was seen as the best. It kept the plant matter, it kept the integrity of the nutrients of the plant matter. Of course, then above that you have expeller press. You also have solvent press where you're adding um, some types of chemicals. Um, and chemicals not, are not all bad. You're adding that to the extraction method and then removing them. But CO2 extraction keeps the plant material with the most integrity. It keeps it vital and alive. And well, with this being said, it is more expensive. And with the CO2 extraction, you can get essential oils, something that's similar to an essential oil or something that's similar to a carry oil. And it is going to depend. So she uses that. And on her website, she also has some quizzes that you guys can take. She also mentions Candida uh, Cleanse for Acne. And again, Candida is 100% pure and natural, but if you have acne, it's definitely not something you want to be having. So she talks about that as well. Now her product line only has five products. And when I purchased from um, Aurora Beauty, I purchased 
four samples and I want to show you guys them very quickly. So I purchased the Potenti um, the Potenti with this is kind of an emulsion for moisturizing. I did the Illumina, which is a vitamin C and um, I purchased the one I'm going to talk about the Aram and the Zen Physique blemish treatment, which is a spot treatment. Now, if you go to her website, the one I'm talking about today, that Aram is not available. Um, and from what I can tell, it was a limited edition. So in addition to these three, she also has a cleanser and a mask. These products are somewhat expensive. Um, so the, the vitamin C, the, the emulsion or the hydrating um, lotion or what have you, as well as this one that I'm talking about today, are about, um, I believe they were 10 milliliters for $63 or $65 if you got the larger size, which was uh, 30 milliliters, which is an ounce, I think it was $145. So definitely expensive. So I wanna talk about some of the ingredients that are in here. So if you guys can see, it has settled, it has separated. So there's different parts here, and you can see it's how it's kind of moving. So you definitely have to shake it before you would use it. Um, now I'm gonna talk about the ingredients, and I got these ingredients, like I said, this is a limited edition, they don't have it on their website anymore, and I got it from thegreenjunglebeautyshop.com, and I'm gonna to link to it below. This is a Canadian website. So what they say is it is a blend of acne clearing oils enhanced with a collagen building amino acid DPHP, which is better than vitamin C. So here we go, we have science coming into play, we have an ingredient that is actually better than vitamin C. It has a very low essential oil content, safe for sensitive and pregnant skin. Now, what they're doing here is something I don't like. They are telling you it has a low content but not giving the percentage. So it's hard for you to make a decision without knowing what the giving you actual numbers. It's like when your doctor says, you know, you have high uh, blood pressure or whatever. Unless they give you a number and they give you the normal range, you can't really make a decision. It says it's a limited edition and uh, blends with white tuberose, white tuberose with white coffee blossom and white champa flowers. It's exquisite. It's supposed to be used as a supplement or special treatment. They say um, once a week along with Potenti, with this, their other vitamin C that they have. Now the ingredients here that they have on this website, um, I have an issue with ingredients that are listed like this. Um, I know Josh uh, Rosebrook does this as well. They have simply listed the common vernacular names. And the problem with this is there are ingredients that have the same name, the common name, um, but the INCI or botanical or inky name are different. Um, and prices are different as well. So the first ingredient is pumpkin seed oil, um, sachi incha seed oil, which is um, an Amazonian oil, I believe it's from Brazil, guava seed, evening primrose oil, hemp seed oil, tamanu oil. Um, hemp seed oil has a, notorious, a notoriously short shelf life. I believe it's about six to 12 months. I've seen it as low as three. So let's say six months on average. I keep my hemp seed oil in the refrigerator and it's, it's pretty commonly known that you should keep hemp seed oil in the refrigerator. Um, and I'm not sure how that plays along with the other ingredients here, whether or not you should keep it refrigerated. Um, but I would definitely be keeping this in a cool, dark place. Tamano oil um, is also known as, um, <clears throat> excuse me, for hot oil and it's really good for scarring. Um, as far as scarring goes, it's usually best for new scars. When you have older scars, rosehip, I'm oh, sorry, um, rosehip oil and evening primrose oil are supposed to be better for older scars. It has Cuba butter, which is from Brazil, and neem oil. Now, neem oil is an ingredient that is very stinky. Um, I know that um, I've smelled neem oil before, and some people um, can't really use it on their skin just because it's so overwhelmingly strong um, and potent. I know some people use it in the garden as well with pests. With neem oil, you don't need that much, um, and it seems to be killing um, the bad bacteria or what have you that can cause acne. Black cumin seed oil is the CO2 extraction, um, and then you have the, the other ingredient that they mentioned, the DPHP. Pearl powder, um, activated charcoal, and frankincense oil. Frankincense oil is one of the areas that I have a problem with. There's a variety of different frankincense out there. You have from Oman, you have from Somalia, you have from India, um, and they work differently. And there's probably other ones out there. Um, and there's also um, some ingredients in frankincense that people say can help with you know, cancer and things like that. Um, and I know that it's controversial but not all the frankincense actually have that ingredient. Um, and in addition, no essential oil, no frankincense essential oil has that ingredient in it. You have carrot seed, CO2 extract, the white coffee blossom extract, white champa oil, which is an essential oil, white tuberose oil, which is 
um, probably very expensive, and you have frankincense tears. Um, so you have frankincense here listed twice, and again, frankincense is one of those that you really need to know where it's sourced from. So frankincense um, is a resin. So what it, I think of it is kind of like maple syrup. It comes from a tree. You can, uh, you can harvest it sustainably and ethically without harming the tree, and you can get out the essential oil, and you can also get out um, the resin. You can also get an oleo resin as well. Um, not the essential oil, but the oleo resin. And so the frankincense tear is referring to the resin, which is often um, used as incense, or you can burn it as well. So I think um, what you're seeing here at the bottom of sediment is probably going to be the frankincense in here. Um, so I do, I like it. I really like frankincense. Um, now as to whether I would repurchase this, this is currently not available. So even if I loved it, I could not repurchase it. Um, and I'm only going off the website that I got here. I'm not going off Moss Skincare because their website doesn't have this anywhere to be found. Um, I don't know all of the ingredients in here. I don't know the exact botanical name. Um, so besides not knowing that, um, hemp seed oil is, it seems to go off very, very quickly. Like I would not keep it outside of my fridge for a, more than a few days at a time. Um, so I would have to keep it refrigerated. And I know that there are some ingredients out there that should not be refrigerated. So if I have to keep this refrigerated, I wouldn't want to put it in the refrigerator and then kind of deactivate it due to the other ingredients that didn't need refrigeration. So um, I believe there's a lot of information missing from here. So I don't know whether this is limited edition. It seems similar to the potential that they have because it does have vitamin C and it is supposed to be used once a day. So I don't know if they were kind of testing it out or it was truly um, a limited edition. Like I said, all this information is not from Moss Skincare that I got. It's from the Green Beauty Jungle, Green Jungle Beauty uh, shop which I'm going to link to below. Um, so I've given you guys a lot of information about Mod Skincare. I've talked about the product and my opinion of it. I want to hear from you guys. Um, please let me know if you have ever purchased anything from Moss Skincare. There's just a lot of things I like about the company that they acknowledge they use preservatives. Then they're a good thing that they use hydrosols. They're using nature and science together and they have a limited product line. Those are pretty cool. So if you bought anything, let me know what you thought of it your opinion of it, uh, leave a comment below. Also like this video and give it a big thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications to get the latest updates. I will see you guys later.